Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to be doing is completing a question here based on the topic of pictorial drawing but specifically uh, the area around um, oblique drawing and what we're going to do is we're going to do this NYC logo here um, where we've uh, I've already created the grid as you can see but I'm going to put in the letters now afterwards and then create the oblique drawing which is where we're going to make it 3D. So it says here the elevation and plan of an abbreviation based on a 10 by 10 grid are shown below create an oblique drawing of the abbreviation. Now, when you're doing oblique, what you have to do is simply, here's the elevation, NYC, that's what the letters look like when you look at the front of them. This is what the letters look like when you look down on top of them, which is the plan view underneath of each letter. There's the plan of the N, plan of the Y, and the plan of the C. Now, what we have to do is we have to draw the N, the Y, and the C in their correct positions inside of the grid. Now, just for a reference of the grid, uh, all these boxes are 10 by 10 but it's 100 high and 270 long. So it is a little bit labor intensive, obviously, in setting up the drawing. But what we're going to do now with that setup, we're going to start heaving it in. So starting with the end, I'm going to heavy in this one. And then there's a little gap of four. One, two, three, four. And then I have two more. OK, so just to make it stand out a little bit clearer. Okay, and the exact same at the top. Right, so there's the end, top of it, sorry. Now what I want to do to connect, uh, to make the diagonal portion, I connect this line to this line, and I connect this point to this point. And that kind of gives us the end section on the inside of it, and a heavy up here as far as the lines intersect. Okay, so there is that one, and now this one. Okay, so there's the N, now I'm onto the Y. So if you look at the drawing, to start the Y, I have a two of a gap, and then it goes two, and then a gap of four, and then two again. So a gap of two, so there's the two gap, and then I heavy in two, one, two, then leave a gap of four, and heavy in two more. Okay, and then at the bottom, then just looking at the drawing here, yeah, I'm going to heavy in these two guys. And it goes up four from there on either side. So up four to here. And just redraw that. Okay, and there's the four on that side. And now what I'm going to do is connect these incline lines. There's one. There's the second. And then it comes into here. That one there. There's one. And two. Okay. So there's the Y. And now I'm onto the C. And I'm going to start at the bottom right hand corner. And it goes back five. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, you're using pencil. Just be careful. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm using the marker. Then it goes in four. And I'll do the exact same at the top. So it goes one, two, three, four. Make sure three, four, five. Okay, and then into four. Back in one. I'm heavy in that one. Okay, and then from there. If you follow it here, it goes across two, down three. So across two, down three, so that'll be the point. Across two, up three, that'll be the point. So I just connect those then. And connect these two. And then it is diagonally up two. And here we go. And there we have the elevation view drawn. Now what we have to do is we have to complete this by making an oblique drawing, which is essentially making the letters in 3D. Now in oblique, all lines will project at an angle of 45 degrees. So I'm going to start with the end here. 
And what I'm going to do is anywhere that I have a vertice, which is where two lines are going to meet, I'm going to project that at an angle of 45 degrees. So 45. I will not see this one, so I won't put it in. This one. This one. This one. Here. And I'll also do inside here. Now, based on the drawing, what we need to determine is the width. Now, if you look at the plan view of the letters, there are two boxes wide, so that means that they are 20 wide overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure then from the corner 20 millimeters. Okay, once I have that done, I can then project up a line, and that hits at the top there, and from where it hits up here, I can do a line across and a line across. Okay, and at this point here, I can use that as a guide, and that will kind of show me where that little mark will be inside there and from there it's going to follow the image of it in front so if it went up here it also has to go up here but I'll stop it on the inside so now it's just a case of heavying in the information there's that one I'm just going to do my vertical lines first Them ones there, and then I'll put in the horizontal ones there. Now that is the end almost complete, but as you can see, we're going to be missing a line inside in here. Now, to get that line, there's two ways, there's two or three ways you could probably do it. One way is this where from this point, technically, there would be an edge running inside there, but just because I don't see it, I can draw it in to help me out. And after I draw it in at 45 degrees. I could measure 20 millimeters and that will show me from that point that is where this one will connect to okay and then I could heavy in that okay and that then completes the end okay and obviously I'll leave out this little bit another way you could have done it instead of going at 45 degrees to figure where that point was inside there inside edge I could have done sliding set squares because this line here needs to be parallel with this line in front of it. And then I'm going to slide in set squares and that will give me the answer as well. Okay, so both will work, just depends which one you prefer to use. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to complete the Y and the C. And we're just going to move a little bit quicker because what we have explained there is how we do um, a sloping surface. When surfaces are horizontal or parallel with the ground, all lines will project at 45 degrees to find the points. In this case, this surface was not parallel with the ground, so we had to do sliding set squares, or we went, this line is parallel with the ground, so we projected at 45 degrees to get the point and connected it up. So, for the Y, I'm going to project 45 degrees. There'll be a point in here. There'll be a point here. 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 And here. Likewise with the C. One there. One there. Inside here. I will not see that one. I'll slightly see this one in here. I'll see this one here, right here at this point. And then this one. This one. And this one. Okay. Now, starting with the Y, I'm going to work from the top. I've already got the top of the end, so that's going to be the same distance, so I can bring that all the way across and put those in, just to kind of start giving it our little 3D look. Now, obviously, if you're doing this in class, you're obviously just going harder with your pencil. Okay, so I've started doing the Y there. Now I'm going to work up on to the side here. So I have to measure 20 millimeters. Now I could just take it from here, but I'm just going to measure again. You can measure again. There's the 20. Now from here, it went up. So at the back, it's like we've extruded the object backwards. So it also is going to go up until it hits that 45 degree line. So there's that one. Okay, and what's helpful here now is I have this point on the outside, I have this point here, so I can just connect those up. But in reality, it should be parallel with this edge, so I will just do a little bit of sliding set squares just to test it out. 
me just check my accuracy. Not bad. Because they should be parallel. And there we have it. Now, to finish off the Y, the inside of the Y is kind of like the N. This time, I'm not going to do the 45 degree line and uh, measuring. This time, from here, or from this line, I'm just going to do sliding set squares. So get the set square here. Put it on the line you want to copy. Because the line here at the back has to be parallel with this one. Slide in set squares. There we go. And there's the Y done. Okay, and now finally we're on to the C. So to start having in the C there, I have a little bit here already done at the top. So I'll have you in this one. This one. That to there. Then heaving it down to here and across. And I'll also have it going downwards. So in line with that one, it has to be the same distance down below. Almost done now. Now, the line from here at the front of the C goes horizontally to the left. So this one has to go horizontally to the left as well until it meets that line. Now, inside the C, this is a little bit more challenging. The line, I could measure out 20, absolutely fine, and connect these up. But once again, it has to be parallel with this line. So I'm just going to use sliding set squares. So any time you have a line that is not horizontal or parallel with the ground, generally we'll have to do sliding set squares. So there we go. There's that one. There's the 45 degrees. Now this one goes vertically up. So the one on the inside also goes vertically up. Go up to hit that there. Heavy in this. And as you can see, we're not fully done. We have a little bit left to do here. And that's going to go parallel with this line here. So a little bit of sliding set squares there once again. Getting your set squares. Following it along. And there we go. Okay, there you have it guys. That there is the NYC logo uh, done in oblique drawing, which is a type of pictorial drawing. Okay, hope you found that helpful. That's the video done.